I'm opposite. So am I. <laughs> it's like, <clears throat> hey, everybody, what's going on? Happy Wednesday night to you and yours. Uh, welcome to the first episode of the Bay Ragney Show after, you know, almost 350 episodes of Total Gym Radio and multiple other shows. But uh, flying solo. And I had to do it with my good friend, Norman, and now Michelle, who we're going to get to meet for the first time. Yeah. Woo! But this show and all of our upcoming shows would not be happening if it wasn't brought for our good friends at, hey, Bombers and Sleeves. Look, I'm like, oh, like, not used to get into the little <laughs> picture here. <laughs> but Bombers and Sleeves, they are a lifestyle apparel brand, and they're dedicated to the war on self-doubt. This is for the bold, the fearless, and the authentic souls who never back down and wear it all on their sleeves. Bomb your boundaries and shop Bombers and Sleeves today, right now, tomorrow, anytime you got at bombersandsleeves.com. I'm all about that, so, Bombers and Sleeves. Make some noise. Woo! Yeah. You, you know what? As I was reading that, too, when they sent this over to me, I said, this goes perfectly with As Strange as Angels music, I feel. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. Yeah, I, love I love what they're all about, man. Which, uh, so everybody, Mr. Norman Matthew, who uh, as a person, this is probably our fourth, fifth, maybe even sixth interview at this point, and somebody who I'm very happy and excited that you are on the first episode of the Bay Ragging Show. And uh, I want to say this, and I'm glad, Michelle, you're here too. We're going to get to you in just one second. But I want to say, like, you know, the last few months I've had a lot of stuff going on. In personal life, you know, with this whole situation, pandemic, whatever you want to call it at this point. But, um, you know, uh, I was very much in doubt on, you know, was I going to keep doing a show? Was I, what was I going to do? And I had this whole idea in the back of my head. And then you reached out to me and you sent me over to a new song. And I hadn't even listened to it. Like, I was just so out of the loop with everything musically and, and in the world, just focused on what's going on in my own world. And then I listened to the song and hearing from you, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, we, we got to do this. So thank you, and I, and that's why I had to do this first episode with you. Oh, really, man? That's awesome, dude. Yeah, you you got to not give up, man. Like, you have been doing a great thing for a long time, and, you know, I've followed you since your wrestling days. What? And, by the way, you still have to get me through a table, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, so that's awesome, man. I didn't even know that. That's super huge. Thank you so much. How about we just eat on a table? Or we could eat, and then you could throw me through the table. Because <laughs> I really well, just want to go. There you go. There you ever, go. My, since, ever since Rikishi taught me how to bump, I have been wanting <laughs> to, like, take bumps anywhere, man. Like, and I'll do it with Dexter. So, like, he'll be messing with that me. That would be awesome. Like, and he does ninja stuff. You know, he's ninja training, and I'll just, like, slap back bump, dude. And it drives him nuts <laughs> because he's like, how do you do that? And then he'll try and do it. And I'm like, no, 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 don't do it. But, man, that that's great, dude. And that makes me happy because, um, you know, the thing we started, you know, with, uh, you know, Michelle, you know, I'll tell you, too, we were both in a place, like, in, in life, right? You know, um, musically, just everything, it was like. I had reached a point where I wanted to give up on myself. I wanted to give up on music. I wanted to give up on, I just wanted to crawl in a hole and die because I was like, you know what? Everyone that's out to get me, let them have me, right? You know what I mean? Like you just, you feel so defeated sometimes that you don't even know what to do anymore, right? Um, and so when we started this project, it was kind of like I wanted to reinvent myself. I wanted to shed my skin. I wanted to evolve. And that's been our thing the entire time, you know, from Mirror Mirror to Miracle to Never Broken to now The Curse, you know, and kind of kind of getting your oomph back because it takes a while. And, um, y you know, it, 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 I've had a couple conversations. There's a, there's a radio station called Tap Detroit in Detroit, Michigan. I don't know if you're familiar. And uh, the owner uh, called me in December and was like, hey, man, um, I want you to know I actually bought the station. And I was like, that's awesome. He, I mean, he's the owner now. And I was like, well, I, I didn't know how that connected to me. And he was like, well, what you're doing with as strange as angels, man. He's like, I have seen you go through it personally and you're not giving up and it inspired me. So I put my pennies together 
and I bought the radio station. And I'm like, what? So it's <laughs> great to hear, man, that like you're going at it too and that we had a little piece of something to do with that, man. Thank you, bro. Absolutely. No, thank you. Thank you. And uh, let's, uh, let's introduce, and, uh, you know, like I said, you know, we've done this, uh, you know, multiple times, me and you, but we never had your partner in crime with you, uh, Michelle. Yeah, so Michelle, turn up the heat on our the show. <laughs> yeah, I'm super happy. To it. Thanks for thanks for letting me join and hang out with Absolutely. you guys. Absolutely. Yeah, I was so when when Norman messaged me earlier and said you were going to be on, I was like, yes, this is huge. This is freaking huge. <laughs> I'm the elusive Michelle. I see enough of Norman all the time, so it's <laughs> nice nice to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Which so. I mean, and, and this is a special day too. On top of you know uh, all, all all these friendships of, of us, and and now with Michelle for me, um, you guys find out today from Billboard that uh, the Curse is one of the top added rock songs on the Billboard charts this week. I mean, come on. Yeah. It's yeah, good. man. Yeah, it's huge. Um, I didn't think we'd get there and get there quickly. And um, you know, Curse is probably one of the heaviest tunes that we have, right, Michelle? And, yeah. you know, it, it, it was just crazy to kind of see it happen. You know, you we get one coming in. You're like, hey, number four, most added. And then you're like, hey, like top 20, I think like number 11, like most increased. And when you look at the list of people we're sitting on with on Billboard, you know what I mean? Foo Fighters, Papa Roach, like ACDC, just like all the big dogs, right? And you're like, I can't believe, like, again, this is number three for us, but the curse by far is already out the gate the biggest of those tunes and i think that's a big part of just the time that we've taken the work that we've done you know the the slow burn there's a lot of um artists i think that will come out the gate swinging and then that's kind of everything and maybe it's part genius or part that i'm just lazy i haven't really figured that <laughs> yet <laughs> but you know what i mean we just kind of like we just go and we go at our own speed on our own terms and yeah. the way that we want to do it. And it's really cool when you can see that like come to fruition, you know, and I love being able to text Michelle stuff like, dude, guess what just happened, you know? So, so from my perspective, I'm not sure if you know like the story of how Norman and I met or got involved. No, um, it, it, that's, that's one thing. I don't think we like ever truly discussed or maybe the very first interview like three, sure. four years ago, we talked about it, but I, I'm dying to know. Yeah, so I actually moved to Dallas Nashville. I've always been in the music scene, whether it's the entertainment, marketing side, actually playing um, since I was very young. I mean, I skipped a lot of my high school uh, going to Memphis, Cordova, Nashville. I am just really grew up fast uh, in the entertainment industry. I got burned, especially a young uh, 19, 20 year old girl in the in entertainment industry. I was just exhausted. Um, again, a lot of my high school years, I, I didn't go to high school uh, i was traveling so i decided listen kind of needed to be done for a while um it really broke my soul and when i moved to dallas and i met norman um found that we were so parallel like with our lives with our emotions with how we viewed music um and i started working at his music studio mentoring kids and really starting to get back involved and in love with music again and when he decided to start this project up, he, you know, was like, I can't imagine me doing this without you. And we are just, we were at the time just so parallel of how we felt about something that really broke us in that time in our life and getting back on board. And how are we going to do this in a way that's inspiring, that's smart, that um, gives back, that offers hope. Um, and I hope that we've been able to portray that in a way that's encouraging to people in a sense of whatever they're going through. Um, it's helped me personally, you know, whether I'm just jamming and, and playing our shows or, or <laughs> listening to our music. Um, well, it, it's, the first thing I have to say is like, you, you mentioned Nashville and I'm now living in Nashville. Nice. That's right. Uh, what part of Nashville were you in? Uh, I lived in Brentwood. I lived okay. in Brentwood. Um, I love both Fra uh, Franklin and Brentwood. Uh, but yeah. Uh, you know what? As a matter of fact, I was at the Brentwood Goodwill today. Nice. 
<laughs> and my stepdaughter goes to a performing arts school down in Franklin. So, yeah, both bases covered. But um, so Del- Dallas has been good to me. Though. <laughs> Dallas has been bizarre. I mean, my friends in Nashville like text me. Uh, you know, they'll see things on my social media with Strangest Angels, or I, I got a drumstick endorsement last year at NAM. They're like, what's happening? Because, you know, it's like uh, I moved from Nashville to Dallas, Texas, which, you know, when I moved to Dallas, I literally had no plans to get involved with music. I needed a break. I was tired. It was kind of like a landing spot. And now it's like bizarre. It's like the opportunities here in, in Dallas. I mean, Dallas has literally treated me so well. And I think in Dallas, we kind of have that opportunity to um, be less music city oriented and have um, our friends, like the bands we play with, the venues we play, like those are our friends. Like when we go to Trees in Dallas and Deep Ellum, like we know Clint, like they're friends. And so it's it's created a really positive, um, non-competitive atmosphere for us to be able to kind of like figure out what direction we want to go. So I love Nashville though. Yeah, that's kind of weird though too. Like you moved from Music City yeah. and then you end up in Dallas and, and things start to pop off and explode for you. Yeah, it's it's bizarre, but it is what it is. It was my path, you know. It was my yeah, path. absolutely. So. Absolutely. Yeah, and I basically so told guys- her she didn't have a choice. <laughs> 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 when that kind of how the conversation went, I was like, uh, so you want to be in this project? Something to that effect, right? Yes. Yeah, and like then, that. yeah, and then it was real chill. She didn't hear anything from me about it. And then I was like, hey, we got the show. Hey, <laughs> we got these things. Hey, and she's like, you you said yes. <laughs> you know what's great about that, though, is like Norman is the dream. I call him like my work husband because that's literally how I feel. He is such a good <laughs> work with because I mean he really has the vision the drive the strategy and I get to come in and you know put my mark on things and and help on the marketing side of things but he really has a vision and I can't tell you what an amazing experience it is to work with a professional like that I mean <laughs> it, 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 you're making him blush so yeah. it's, it, it's, because uh, you know even if there's last minute shows going on it's a professional and we try to do our best um, in every situation to to be professional and still have fun but you know it's so nice to be in a very um, professional atmosphere that you know when we get things done we get things done he directed our last music video the curse I mean he had a complete vision for that I mean I, I popped in set up my drums and we rolled you know it was really cool so it's nice because you don't all you don't always have that uh, brain when you're a musician, right? Some people just want to create art. Some people want to do business. Uh, Norman and I's brains are both somewhere in the middle. So it makes it good. So, so when he said to you, like, I, I want you to be part of this project, I mean, do you still consider it a project? I mean, I don't look at it as a project anymore. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, no. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, that was kind of the weird thing too, right? I mean, I didn't, I didn't know exactly where we were gonna go and what we were gonna do. Like when we released the very first single waves, I was like, well, let me see if anyone cares. Let me see if there's anything here. And my big thing was I wanted to move past from any of the bands that I had been in before. And not that there's anything wrong with any of that. It was just if I was going to evolve and shed some skin and, you know, reinvent myself very David Bowie, like, right. To a certain degree, I wanted to also earn the, the, the next step on this music and this band's own merit. You know, I didn't want to be the guy formerly of from this band in this, I was like, no, I want this to be this entire thing. I mean, there was even times where I was like, should I change my name? Should I have some weird kind of name? Like just for the (laughs) idea that I really wanted it to be different. And so when we first went out, I know Michelle will laugh about this all the time. I was always so incredibly scared because if you've seen me in any of my other projects, you know, I was like, make some noise, right? And I remember walking out like the first time we played together and I was like, how do the songs go? What do I do? Oh my God. Like, I mean, I was like sweating my hands were sweating i was nervous it was like and probably up until maybe 
when we like opened for red right that was like the first time that i finally kind of like opened up almost a year and a half into it because I wasn't hiding behind our black latex paint that I was in with my other bands and right. our, you know, our stage gear and our eyeliner and our mascaras and wh whatever the hell we were wearing eyeshadow, right? It was like, you went into character mode, which was super fun, but I didn't realize one, how much that kind of just covers you up to where you're really comfortable, right? Yeah. And then musically, it was so incredibly different, right? Like it hits, it's a stock band setup and it hits like a band, but everything that like we're doing with the Strangers Angels is different. Like the lyrics are different, the melodies are different, the guitar doonings are different, the guitars are different. Like just it, everything about it that it was like, that was one of the things that I was searching for though. Again, I wanted to feel like that little dude in my parents' basement, just in love with music again for the sake of being in love with music. Not to be, you know, the coolest guy with the biggest one on the block, not to get in the pissing contest with other bands, like not to any of that, you know? It was like, I just wanted to remember that feeling and get back in touch with what that was like. And I think it was very comfortable with Michelle because she was kind of, you know, like, we were both like two cats getting sprayed with water when it came to music, right? Like. Meh. Like we were, we didn't really go for it. And I was like, let me see what happened. And then after that, like just something kind of hit that I got the confidence. And then that's when we walked into Mirror Mirror and Miracle and things really started to roll, you know? And then it just kind of evolved to where we are now where I was like, all right, now I'm not scared, bring it back. But I had to come back to that feeling in a different person, if that makes any sense, you know? Um, Bay, are you familiar with Red? A little bit. So I have a weird story from this. Okay, so this was like really my dad's favorite band was Red. And Pillar, the rock band, went on a tour with Red. And one of the drummers in Pillars was like a mentor of mine when I was in Nashville. And I'll never forget sitting beside watching Red when I was like 19 years old. And then Norman called me last year, the year before, I guess now. 2020 to me just was like blank. Um, right. <laughs> and Norman was like, we're gonna open up for Red. And I thought we'd maybe be like first. We were like direct support for Red. I mean, packed house. I could just see my dad crying like, oh, it was so cool. But it was like- Oh, that's cool awesome. Cool experience. I mean, I remember listening to Red in my dad's truck at like 16 and him being like, it's my favorite band. <laughs> so watching dad like cry at the Red concert was like so cool because I was like, dude, literally my life has come full circle. Uh, <laughs> why I believe like I'm supposed to be in Dallas right like it just it was an affirmation for me I mean it was bizarre um I was so excited that was a really really fun show Norman I think we were all really comfortable at that show yeah and it was crazy too because I think we may have figured that show out um had that opportunity within like 48 hours or something right when it's like really crazy because I was in Arkansas for a show like acoustic show with John Karabi then had to get back to Dallas to then get to New York the next night. So it was like this crazy time travel thing we were doing, right? Like the week before too. Yeah. So it was just, it was nuts, man. And that's kind of like what I love about the way things are rolling for us. It's like, we kind of decide when we're going to do it. And then when we throw it on the wall, we're like, all right, let's see what happens. But again, it's about the music first. It's about our message first. And I'm not trying to sound like, never art of art and cliche with it but it just it's for all the different reasons that make it really so much fun again you know and then to be able to be having the opportunities we have and the successes we've had like with billboard today it's like man i did that we did that and we hit it and we did it for all the right reasons you know what i mean like and that's that's makes me feel really good about me you know, um, just to be able to be like, we did it in a way that we wanted to do it as positively as we could. Do you think, um, because something I want to get into is that it, you know, it's you guys. You are the band. It's a two piece. Um, I, I know you guys have people who contribute here and there on songs, but for the most part, it's just used to. Do you think, like, when something like that happens today, when you, when you get that notification from Billboard, do you think it means even more because it's just used to? It's not four or five 
people all together in a band and a whole you know team behind you and a whole huge record label it's for the most part it's you guys yeah totally i mean i know for me it it comes from a different place already so it's kind of like even if there was you know we were kanye west and had like 10 people (laughs) writing the song right um the intention and the core about it it's just something completely different it's a very different feeling it's almost like me watching dexter score a goal at like soccer you know what i mean you're like i made that that did that Woo! (laughs) And, and it's a very very different like feeling man and it's so cool um and i didn't think i'd ever be able to do it much less once twice and now three times so it's it's crazy (laughs) yeah how about i i want to know like when you guys were um you know putting this all together too um because you guys are just a two-piece we've talked about in the past norman michelle what were your thoughts were you kind of like i don't know this is kind of weird i don't know how people want to take to us or well, I mean, depending on what show it is specifically or what we're doing, um, I, I, I'm kind of the, the operator in back, back there, as you can imagine, being a two-piece band. So that, to me, is, is fun and exciting, very White Stripes vibe a little bit. Um, right. I like it. I, I think everyone is smart enough to know an 801 doesn't come out of a floor, Tom. Uh, <laughs> uh, but in general, it's fun because there's different elements that you can do um, that make it a little bit more exciting. I mean, pending shows we've had, we've maybe had a bass player um, join us or, you know, CJ Pierce from Drowning Pool has joined us a show. Uh, so we really, like Norman said, try to choose the shows that make the most sense, um, that we feel like we would connect with the, the our audience the best um, and would provide that opportunity to connect spread some love and encouragement, but I'm always up for the challenge. I think it's fun. I think it's different and exciting. Um, even us shooting the music video by our, by ourselves, uh, you know, and him directing me, it was fun. I mean, it just felt natural. It wasn't like there's, oh, there's people missing or it doesn't really feel like that. Yeah, it definitely is, a, I'd say, a lot more room for creativity, a lot more room for the both of us to, like, exist. You know what I mean? Um, in a very different way so one of the other things about the, the group was that i was like you know what we had toyed with you know like michelle said we had different people in the band and we're like well maybe we should have a full band live but as the music started to grow and we started to get into marketing and stuff with our team you know and like managers it was like hey maybe we should stick to just the two of us because it's gonna make you look you're gonna be like what? there's only two of them that's weird right like how do they right. do that right and, you know, and then like the white stripes, you know, I think it was like, like loud wire or something and called us like the heavy white stripes. And I was like, I'll take that. I want some white stripes <laughs> problems. Right. Um, but it was cool because it will on the visual make you look. So we started implementing like Michelle more in this stuff. It started with me at first just because I didn't really know what we were going to do. You know, that and I love the cure and I love this band him. So I was like, hey, the singer's on the cover. I'll be on the cover. It's kind of cool. Um, but it morphed into so much more. Right. And then creatively. Um, now working on the songs, I don't have to think about a stock band setup, right? Like, oh, I got to write for this guy or, you know, this person, or we have a keyboard player, or this is kind of our sound. I'm like, we can really do anything that we want musically. If like it was a shoebox and a kazoo that needed to be the track and that was it, we could do that. You know what I mean? And we would figure out how to do that between us. Um, I've also really embraced technology in a lot of ways with the live show that I was like, man, rather than having it work against us, we can use this to our advantage, you know, because it's like it keeps us, you know, Michelle on ears. It keeps us playing to metronomes. It keeps us in time. Like everything is timed. Everything works. Like lights can work in conjunction with it. We can do whatever we want musically and actually not be held down by even having to omit somebody, you know, like, hey, dude, you don't play on this song, so get out of the way. Which for me, I love dudes like Prince. I love Prince, right? Bruno Mars. I like Bruno Mars. You know what I mean? The Weeknd, right? Um, where there, it's more about the song. And so the instrumentation changes live, right? If you notice right. the setup, you'll notice there's, there's, you know, 10 people on stage. Now there's only four. Now there's six. Now there's one, you know? And I think that's really cool. And that was something that I wanted to 
something different for the band as well. I was like, all right, if we're going to do this, let's do it in a different way. Um, you know, and, and wrestling top, that's our gimmick. That's our gimmick. We're going to do it, something different. It may be our curse, but it also may be our blessing, but it's going to make you look and it's going to make you pay attention one way or the other, you know, and that was something that we wanted to do. You know, I know I wanted to do, I was like, I got to do this different because I can't expect people to be like, Hey, check out what I'm doing now. That right. is completely the same, but just my way now. Right. I was like, nah, man, we got to get creative with it. What were you scared? You said it already. Like, were you scared of just that? Like, because it's not two guys or two girls, it's the guy and the girl. So, you know, immediately you're going to get the white stripes comparisons where you, you already said you were okay with that, but were you kind of scared at first because you were putting this, you know, toying with the whole concept of everything? Uh, no, I'm a better drummer than her. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. Dang. Boom. <laughs> no, Shots <just> fired. <laughs> uh, uh, so, like, bang, okay. bang, that was a shoot. <laughs> I have never met as female drummers as there are in Dallas, Texas. So I, I'm mm. joking to say that because I'm like all about female power. <laughs> all drummers, so I'm totally joking. Um, totally. No, I, I love it. And I think like Norman said, right? Like there's always going to be those people, no matter what you do in life, they're like, I don't like that. I don't agree with that. Um, people are going to go to our shows and be like, that's not music or see our music video. That's not music. I mean, the ideology in it is like, like Norman said, if you do the exact same thing over and over and expect a different result, um, like that's insanity, right? So for us, it was about not only creating um, inspiring music, cool riffs, et cetera. But like, what can we do to stand out and be a little bit different and, and say like, this is us. I mean, you like it, you love it, you don't, and that's okay. Uh, so for me, it, it's fun and exciting because if you notice just me being the marketing music uh, brain that I am, people go to a concert to experience something, right? And to listen to the music, but it's more about of a euphoria, aesthetic, um, feeling that the music gives you. So there could be 20 people on stage, there could be one person on stage, but if you connect and have that feeling of euphoria or you have that feeling of, wow, I had such a good experience, um, I think that's what matters at the end of the day is to entertain and give the people what they want. Otherwise, stay at home and stream our song, right? Like it's, right, it's, it's it is, right? It's true. And I like to hide. I'm so anti front man, <laughs> believe it or not. I didn't realize it until we started playing shows. I was like, oh my gosh, like if I could put Michelle in the front and I could be in the drummer spot, that could be all about it. Cause it's so weird. Like, I'm like, I didn't realize like how, um, and maybe it's because there's so much personality of my own now that I put into the music that I never did in my other bands that I'm like, I really feel like it's me. So I feel like I'm on blast, right? So I'm like, don't look at me. Well, <laughs> I mean, I think lyrics from let's say like you know Murder FM to now. I mean, it's it's you. It's no front. It's no trying to be a badass. It's like this yeah. is your raw emotions written on paper that you're now singing in front of hundreds of people, right? So, I think that that's probably why because it's a new matured side of you. I mean, and you can hear that in in the music too. You know, so that gets curved. Here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, the, the scary part, Norman, is um, I, I was looking back. The last time we did this, last time we, we talked in an interview, was uh, 33 weeks ago. It was like June 4th or something like that. Um, you know, and at that point, it was the whole pandemic was all still very new to us. And, you know, it, things have opened up a lot more since then. But, um, like, how have you guys been handling everything and you, you already mentioned and i was wondering too like you mentioned how it's been like a slow build and do you think it's been better because of the pandemic because you can take your time now and be slow and not have to worry about rushing things and trying to book a tour and all that other stuff yeah you know um in some ways it it has um it's made you rethink it i mean for us i know for me at first it was like we were we were on this trajectory man i mean we were walking into like festival offers like we should have been overseas this past summer 
we were supposed to do our the video for Never Broken in New York with Tom Flynn, who still ended up editing it. But uh, I'm a super fan of his work. And so to not be able to do all that stuff was super disappointing at first. But then it did kind of like it was weird. The whole world had to slow down. And in some ways, sometimes I'm like, I feel like we all needed that, right? Like you needed to just be like, like, I, I know for me it was, it, it felt there was a comfort in knowing that everyone wasn't doing anything. And I don't like that negative things have come out of it and people have lost family and stuff like that. I'm not saying that's great. But what I'm saying is just in the mindset before any of that was kind of really happening, right? It was like, wow, like. Maybe this is a big sign from above. Like y'all need to chill <laughs> and get your life straight, right? So creatively, um, it created the opportunity for songs like The Curse uh, and a lot of different stuff that was coming up. Um, I think it really opened up people to listening to music more again and not just worrying about the live show, which is, I mean, that's how I grew up. You know, I didn't see a lot of bands growing up because I, Guns N' Roses, right? They were either in a club or they ended up in the Enormo Dome. And that was when I finally got to see them, right? Like there was no club life for me to see. So I had to exist yeah. in the records and whatever content I could find in Hit Parader and Rip Magazine and stuff, right? And I think that kind of brought back the appreciation for a music fan in general, like digging for content, digging for new music, digging for bands. And I know for a band at our level, a lot of the big dogs kind of like sitting on the bench for a little bit, like it, left you know the room for like the little underdogs to start to like come in you know to be like hey we've got something to say we've got something to do too it kind of cleared that path that um i don't know that that would have been there before you know so once i started to see that materialize in a business sense i was like man we need to jump through those holes that are going to be there you know and just try to make the best of a bad situation um we did want to get up and play again this year too but it was like you know, we've had show offers and Michelle and I talk about it quite a bit. And you're like, we, we struggle with it a little bit, right, Michelle? Mm -hmm. You know, because it's like, we want to go play, but we also don't want to be like, hey, come out and, you know, see what happens on our account, you know? So it's, yeah. Yeah. you know, I we mean, Michelle have... has some real good points about that. Yeah, I mean, it's a moral dilemma, right? Uh, it comes for my bands and, and local venues in a pandemic hard because you know I work in advertising and I have a lot of my small businesses who close their venues who you know their, their employees are laid off it's hard it's seriously a moral dilemma but for us we've been tried to, uh, we've tried to still be uh, you know accommodating to anybody who wants to listen to us we've done uh, personal live streams we've done live streams in our group page which is called uh, our guardians page is strangers angels guardian guardians which has um, good times uh, exclusive content, uh, and we do some live streams in there, so it's a lot of fun. <laughs> if anybody wants to join that page, I encourage it. Um, and then we've done some live streams on YouTube for the public. I mean, we've tried to tried to be like, hey, you know, if you're sitting at home chilling, nothing to do, come hang out with us. Um, just who we want to be. So, yeah, I mean, it we definitely embraced that. Like that was super fun, you know, and took advantage of the fact that we have like you know, our own stage and studio that we can do whatever we want, whenever we want. Um, and so that was cool to just kind of call it, you know, call an audible, hey, do you want to do an acoustic thing tomorrow? And Michelle's like, uh, fuck. Yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, you're killing me. Cool, what time? And that, that's what I love. I drive her nuts, but then she's still there. I'm like, yeah, yeah cool. Yeah, yeah. Just, just be here. Um, and, we're, and, and we're both, I think, kind of funny like that because she'll be like worked to the bone and over it. And I'm super lazy, but somehow we still manage to do quite a bit in a very short amount of time all the time. And I don't know how that happens because I will avoid it like the play, you know, like I'm like, oh, pictures, uh, videos, uh, this. But when we get in, we get in and we're like, boom, 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 boom spike drop. You know what I mean? It's funny. Like, <laughs> we really well together like that. So we did embrace like the live stream stuff for sure. I mean, I, for one, have really enjoyed that um, because that opened up for me having to get into video, which opened yeah. up a side that I didn't know I realized I liked it that much and would do okay. I, I don't have the patience for it, but I'll still do it because it's a whole nother creative thing that makes me excited again. You know, I'm like, now I can tell my story 
through video? Oh, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I'm amazed that I get things done because I will agonize over things and I will like redo it and redo it and redo it. Um, so just changing my mindset and being able to do a bunch of different different stuff has been like, you know, just super fun, man. We're, we're all just trying to make the best of a bad situation. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Now, how about, um, you know, uh, with the last single, Never Broken, you guys uh, started to break through in the whole new world of uh, Sirius XM's Octane. Uh, how huge was that for you guys? Man, that was, for us, that's like, that's that's the motherland, right? For active rock bands, you know what I mean? If you can live on Sirius XM, on Octane in particular, for us, um, I mean, you, you were in gold. And um, the support that they gave us, considering all the bands that go through there, all yeah. bands that get pitched, all the bands that get worked. You know how it is, man. It's like, it's like with wrestling, right? There's only a couple of big places you can work. And yeah. Sirius XM is one of those. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, yeah. For bands. And it was huge to break through. We knew that we had to take time. I know I knew that we had to take time to get to satellite, to get to that station, because it's a real tricky, like, chess game right because you need the support uh, of people when it actually drops which is super huge you know they, they want to see engagement they want to see things happening and then to be able to open the door and have a second opportunity with the curse man it's just like it, it's awesome because there's so many like new bands that are found that way there's so many new bands that have not had a life per se like at radio like a band yeah. like motionless and white or something or i prevail but they will live on octane and just get these massive fan bases because it's yeah. so specific to our genre and the yeah. people that support it are people that support these bands so it's just like it's a big family it's like the headbangers ball right of back in the day you know what i mean it's you get on headbangers ball and you get on rotation on Headbangers Ball, you're like, mm -hmm. it's just a matter of time now, you know? So I'm so grateful for the support that they've given us on, on these two tracks, man. So it's going to be huge. And anyone that supports it, thank you. Now, now something else uh, with, with Never Broken 2 that I want to get into before we get into the curse is um, something that I'm dying to know how it affected both of you guys with um, – I mean, you guys put a, a video out on YouTube where it was the fans uh, speaking how inspirational, you know, you guys have been to them and, and, and how you affected uh, lives. So <clears throat> what was it like for you guys to, what, when the fans started sending these videos into you guys, I mean, it, it, you know, you watched that. It, it's got to be for, for an, an outsider who didn't write the song or perform on the song, it's moving. So for you guys, it had been like, wow, like it, it's got to put things in a whole different perspective. Oh, it totally did. Um, I mean, to, to, you, you hear it sometimes, you know, someone will send a really sweet message, you know, like, hey, your song like made a difference, you know, um, I made my day, it got me through some stuff and you're like, wow, that's huge. But when Never Broken hit, and I don't know if it was the pandemic everything going on the song had nothing to do with it but it did land at what could and have been a more perfect or more relevant time should we say right um you know and it was that anthem for overcoming adversity and that feeling that i think we all kind of felt like busted up and broken and i didn't realize how deep like the song lyrically like for people that were like sending you know messages and stuff like how much like wow people are taking this and applying it to their lives like even deeper <clears throat> than I was that I got this idea of like, what if we could compile these videos, get, you know, a handful of things. I mean, the, I only could get maybe like 10 in video or something. It was, we had a ton of them, but I'm like, the song's only four minutes long. And I thought, you right. know, we get little snippets or something. I mean, we were getting people that were like, just pouring their hearts out, man. And I would be putting the video together and I was like, oh my God, just like getting all watery eyed and crazy because one of the biggest things that I have wanted to do was like, I have to make an impact and I have to make a difference. I have to use the talent that I've been given um, for good and not yeah. evil, right? And like make a difference and to see it make a difference to see yeah. it resonate like dude it, it blows your mind like it's the coolest feeling and i mean some deep stories bro like i mean there were some that i was like 
are you sure you want me to put this in the video? You know what I mean? Because it was like, it would gut you. But that's, I think, something that needed to happen. And I, I was glad that we were able to be able to like provide the outlet. And for people that got into it too, that I'm kind of like, man, should we do like a second one? Should we, you know, I mean, just all kinds of crazy stuff, you know, and to see people just engage it and really make an impact was, I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm moved because I didn't think that I would ever be able to create something that could do that, that could go that far to actually evoke that much positivity and emotion in somebody. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm crazy that you caught that. That's awesome. That's, hey, I, you know, I'm all about like that in music, like that, that's what gets me. And like when I listen to your guys' music, for instance, I, I get that feeling in, um, you know, it's funny just the other night, like th there's one song that I, I don't know what it, I, I kind of know what it is, but there's one song I listen to and every time I listen to it, I, like, I just start to cry. Like I, I just bawl and, um, it's from the Foo Fighters, best of you. And, oh, yeah. you know, I, I tell, I, I tell the story to people about it and the other night I was sitting here and I, I just remembered like I, I filmed a video of that back at the Philadelphia Spectrum from 10 years ago and I put it on YouTube. I'm like, oh my God, like I forgot all about it. I'm like, I wonder if we still have it up there. And I searched and I found it. And I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm watching it and then I just start crying. And my fiance is like, she comes in, she's like, what's the matter? I'm like, <laughs> and it, she, yeah, she, she's like, what is it with that song? Because she, she knows like every time I listen to that song, I just start crying. Like if I'm in the car, I have to turn it off. So, uh, and I can like feel what those songs from you guys. Like I, I start to get that feeling like in my gut, like it's like, oh my God. Like, I so. Think, I think that's what I love about me, right? Is because every single person experiences it differently. So I've heard people talk about Never Broken like, this is my workout jam. Like I jam this mm -hmm. in the M to get pumped. And I hear people be like, dude, this really got me through a hard time. Uh, dude, I start my mornings with this to get me hype. Like I prayed across the board. I think that's such the beautiful thing about music is it literally, you know, no matter if it's a song, I, and in, you know, you listen to it a hundred times, it's going to hit every single person and, and they're each own individual way. And I think that's the beautiful part about music, you know? Uh, Absolutely. Is that? I mean, it's a, it's a soundtrack to people's lives, right? We associate Absolutely. songs with certain things in our timelines, right? And you can hear something you haven't heard in 17 years and be like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? And it like takes yeah. you back to that moment out of nowhere. Um, yeah. And for us to be able to have that, I mean, that's that's killer to me. That's one of the coolest things ever. So that, that leads us up to the new single. You guys uh, put it out actually back in December. Uh, the video came out last week, which you started saying, Norman directed, which I'm trying to figure out, like, dude, you already have enough jobs, and you just decided to pour more jobs onto your shoulder. <laughs> um, so, uh, but when I listened to it, the, the first thing I said, be, knowing, uh, you know, uh, how you guys broke through on the last single, Never Broken, on Sirius XM's Octane, I said to myself, this is like an instant hit on Octane. Like, I, I can, I can feel this is going to be a huge, like, blow never broken away on Octane. That, that, that's, that's what we're hoping for. Um, that's, that's been the plan. That's part of that slow burn of, like I told you, I'm like, you know what? we got to work it. we got to earn our wings. We've got to get the foundation underneath us and really build it like one brick at a time. But once we get to that crucial part, you're like, you know, I text Michelle the other day. I was like, it's our Hail Mary. Like, here we yeah. go. You know what I mean? Because if this one can't pop um, with everything we've had, like in the back end and just putting those little pieces in place, I'm like, I don't know what will. You know what I mean? Because we've really thought out everything, uh, done everything as creatively as we could. We have an amazing team who works with some massive bands right now that it's just like, I mean, the, the plan we put together has been a complete marathon, not a sprint, because we really wanted to work up to that. And in ways where you would see bands back in the day, you know, and they would have on the third record, they would break, right? You know, you get the debut yeah. that was really awesome, right? You'd get the second record, and then you got Deftones White Pony, and they're, you know, they yeah. the rocket is strapped to them, you know, and that's kind of like 
the same mentality we've been trying to do the old school you know a thing that we do with artist development it's like mm -hmm. a place and there's a time and you can't rush it because if you try to mix the two together and mash it up and then it gets weird like it's not gonna work you just have to like put those blinders on and you know pump the brakes and just go um so i'm glad that you said that man because when i heard the first mix of the curse i was like dude I don't know how much closer I can get to like, I call it the guitar center riff, you know, where you walk into a guitar center and someone's going, da -na 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 -na. you know, you walk into understanding <laughs> happening or paranoid. Right. I'm like, right. I, I don't know if I got another one in me, man. Cause this is like, this is for me, you know? <laughs> that like, was this song, like, did you guys have this song written or was this something that like you, you, you wrote last year specifically for this time it, or it was lightning in a bottle captured in kansas of all things with uh dawson and jimmy and just literally done probably within i'd say 14 hours wow yeah like the idea i i, I drove in on a friday um through that stuff around came in on a saturday lazy because i'm lazy um, <laughs> and I, like, I have to be in the mood. I went into my inner axle. I have to be ready to perform. Um, then we hit it. We put it together, <laughs> Michelle. And then uh, on Sunday, man, we just like wrapped up on my way out, like back to Dallas. And it was like the weirdest thing. Like we knew from the get go that like in the bones of the song that we had something. You know, when we showed our team, it was like before, even just the most stage, it was like we got it. We got the one, you know what I mean? We've got right. the one and the one always has like different types of elements, right? And that was what was weird at first. I wasn't like super convinced because I was like, hmm, do you think I can like pull this off? You think I can do it? Like, cause it was probably like, it's all the heaviest thing I think I've done. I'm like, it's gonna make a mark, right? Like, but, uh, and that's when I was kind of like, it is the one because it was the first time that it had me like, kind of second guessing what I was doing and everyone else was in, where usually it's kind of the other way around. I'm totally in and I'm trying to convince, dude, I'm telling you this song, bro. It was the other way around. People were telling me, dude, this song, bro. So I was like, you know what? But let's run with it and let's see what happens. And so when I got that first mix, I was like, whoa. I mean, I was impressed. I think us. you also have to <laughs> it. What the cool thing is, is like, there's not a formula or name right like if you think about a certain specific type of rock band a very well known you're like you know what to expect that next from them right what i love about us is like you're not you're never gonna know like what you're gonna get like what's next it could be a really heavy song it could be a ballad it could be an acoustic album it could be something like you know miracle uh mirror mirror like you just kind of don't know and i think that's what's fun is because we kind of get to go where it leads us, you know, like Norman jokes about like, we could do an album with a kazoo. Like we could, <laughs> we're not in this box, um, yeah. which I think is really fun and cool. Like we enjoy playing on shows, but like uh, Norman knows this. I love playing acoustic stuff, um, like Cajon, Ajembe, that comes really natural to me. Um, and so like, I mean, we go jam in a coffee shop. We played a show with the uh, acoustic show with John Karabi from Motley. Like, I love that. And it's, you get to hear a strip down, different stuff. We cover the cure. Like, there's not a really, um, A, I expected for them to do that, which is fun, you know? That's cool. That's super cool. Now, how about, like, going back to you directing the video, Norman, um, what made you want to take on that responsibility? Did, did you already have like the whole thing and you're just like, I have to do this or. Yeah, it was, it was weird. Um, it was like timing and a need, right? So when we did Never Broken, uh, Thompson was still able to edit it, but we had to shoot the footage, right? And it's a familiar process to me, like with artists that I like mix and produce now, like a lot of times we won't even be in a room together. We, I just get the tracks. Uh, put it together and then you know we, we mix and rearrange and whatever and, and produce the track like that so I was like okay maybe from a distance we can do the video even though I'm like I don't know how to line up shots I don't know about lighting I don't understand color grading all this stuff I had to learn and I was like 
that's the video we need to make just chaotic so i mean there are like scenes where like i'm just walking around michelle going like this like i didn't really know what i was doing it's like that looks dope that's giving me a headache that looks great um <laughs> dexter at the time was five and for my scenes i was like hey baby come here and he's like yeah daddy and i was like hold this camera and he goes okay and i was like hit play on daddy's song. He's like, okay. And I was like, and when you do, I'm just gonna jam out and I want you to just go crazy with the camera. So literally half of Never Broken is shot by a five-year-old, um, my <laughs> little boy, just so everyone gets that one straight. It was my child. Um, yeah, and it was awesome because you know, to incorporate him for one was super cool. Two, to like see him just going, mm, 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 mm. and then three, to see it work. I was like, huh, okay. Well, if Dexter can get it done, then maybe, <laughs> I, right? I, I, and then we started doing the live streams and we would do lighting. And like, I know Michelle would notice because we would do one and I'd be crazy lazy. And then the next one, I'd come in with like all this soft lighting, like five different lights happening, like, don't blink or you'll change my entire mood. And I set it up, right? Like all of a sudden I was like selfie girl, right? Like <laughs> had all the poses down, had all the lighting. I was like, I got this handled. Not the girl. Um, I love this <laughs> though, because like you can imagine, uh, not only uh, it has being a female, but like being a professional, like walk in, you know, the video and he's got the lighting, he's got the camera, he's ready to go. And it makes my job easier because it's like, it's just professional, you know? I mean, we have fun and goof around. Don't get, get me wrong. There's probably three hours of footage of me rolling around and doing something crazy. But <laughs> it's, 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 it makes it um, Fixing your hair. <laughs> that I actually right. snuck into the video, which is funny. But um, it was just, it was the need, you know? It was like, you know what? Maybe it's the time for me to try my hand at this too. And in the spirit of doing everything different, let's just do this one different too might as well because i was like i don't want to have a band video where we're playing again i yeah. and we've made so many like back in the day it would be easier right because you'd have like two singles on an album you know like two videos max right now it's like these days there's single cycle every video has a single or every single has a video so you're like man you can get four or five videos from a band like in the span of a few months and it's almost kind of like what are you giving me that's any different right so I was like, okay, I'm going to take that mindset and the way that I feel and be like, let's do something really crazy different and like do the least amount of band performance that we can, um, which also helps because I didn't have those parameters of shooting that kind of stuff. And I wasn't really going up against a band video, right? So really by being kind of wacky and artsy, I'm like, it's not really too much to compare it to. So it was like, <laughs> yeah. But it was fun. Now I'm crazy about it. Now I'm like, oh my gosh, we got to do another video. I'm already working on it. Well, yeah, we've already oh, got no. another track coming up, right? I'm like, dude, check out this footage. Yeah, I'm already like <laughs> at it. I'm like, damn, yeah, dude, bands I'm producing. They're like, hey, man, do you want to shoot our video? And I'm like, you know what? Makes sense because since I've produced you, I understand your brand and your theme. Might as well because I get the whole package, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, now I'm crazy in the video too. Go figure. <laughs> Well, guys, uh, I actually have a nine o'clock other live stream that I have to uh, jump off. Please continue, though. I just wanted to let you know it's been a super amazing pleasure to chat with you today. Um, I really it's great to finally meet you. So I'm gonna pop off, Norman. Enjoy, but great. See you, to meet Shay you. Shay. Thank you guys so much. Love you guys. Have a Thanks great night. Thanks for being here, Michelle. Bye. Right, so. so with. Um... With, with, with you now, uh, director and, and all this, like, did, did you enjoy it? Like, did, Absolutely, did you... man. Okay. I, I think the prob probably the most painstaking part was the editing, which is what I got my buddy MBS, uh, Matt from Sweden, actually to help me out with it because I thought it would be really cool since he lives in Sweden. It's a different world. Um, one of my favorite bands, him, is from Finland, which is, you know, it's neighboring. Um, th there's there's a different vibe going on in the everyday, right? It's just yeah. a different world. I mean, at some point there was like what sun for only four hours a day, and so I wanted that that kind of not trying to be dark feel, just naturally organically dark. You know what I mean? And kind of like giving you a little a little tension 
without realizing it. So between the two of us, we were able to, to I feel, do something super interesting. I don't know if it's cool or not, but it's definitely like interesting and it was really fun. And I don't generally watch videos for ba- from bands and now that I'm in music, you know what I mean? Like it's different. Yeah. When you're, when you're a fan and you're like coming up and you're trying to like get all that knowledge, you watch it. But then once you're kind of doing it yourself, you're so wrapped up in your own stuff. Yeah. Right? Um, so I very rarely do, and I and I caught myself like rewatching it again and rewatching it again and watching it for fun, just to be like, oh wow, this is cool. And then it got me into, you know, checking out other people's videos and other things and learning about all that stuff, like color grading and the editing and making a match up. And it was just it was really interesting because I felt again, like I told you, my whole mission has been going back to when I first started music, being excited in my family's basement, like being excited for everything making a flyer, playing a backyard party, like drawing a map on the flyer to show you where the kegger was so that everyone could come see us. You know what I mean? It's like the most innocent little things um, are what were, were the biggest, right? And it was like, I'm so, I'm so excited about that again. Um, so yeah, I think doing the video really um, just kind of helped with the icing on the cake for me uh, on the excitement factor. You know what I mean? Like I get nervous and I, and I missed being nervous because you get it down to a science to a certain yeah. degree you know what i mean you know that with sure. wrestling right you, you you get into Absolutely. your thing where you're just like you do it and you're like Ugh, what time am i going to be done right and it's not that you don't appreciate it or don't care you just how many times can we like recreate this with that mm-hmm. first initial like so for me back to the wrestling i feel like i get the road warrior pop <laughs> when i do the music now i'm like oh boom! i'm excited <laughs> again you know what i mean I'm losing my mind which i just kind of lost um, along the way, and I think just you know, I was a, a, a punching bag for a little while, so it made me just kind of like <laughs> tap out, you know. So it's, it was super well, fun. How about like uh, something that I saw? And I was actually, I mean, I was blown away when I, when I was reading this, and I mean, you're the guy who's creating the music, so you had to be blown away even more. Was the fact that um. <clears throat> your two singles that you put out last year, Never Broken and The Curse, which was at the, you know, the last month of the year last year, KNAC picked up, put both songs in their top 10 releases for 2020. That's huge, right? Yeah. That's huge, man. Um, that, that was a big feather in the cap for us, you know, too. Again, it was like, wow, man, like, I didn't think we'd get one of something, much less two, much less multiple chances. And I really got to chalk that up to, um, just kind of being vulnerable with the music again, being vulnerable with the the project, being me on a thousand, right? And I know I love to talk about wrestling a lot, but it's that thing like with, with Stone Cold, right? That's Stone Cold just on a thousand. And that's why it connects, right? Instead of trying to put something on, it's like, just let me be me in the music. And that's why I felt like it wasn't that I couldn't work with band members. It wasn't that I couldn't be in a band. I was just like, the best way this is going to work for me uh, on a creative level is for me to be able to just be me. Sometimes I'm on, sometimes I'm off, sometimes I'm here, sometimes I'm there. But I need to be able to be in those moments to capture some of that. And that's what makes it cool, you know? So sometimes if I wrote a really drab song, you're like, wow, that song really geez that dude needs a hug like that was the thing <laughs> you know what I mean? you can't plan to be like hey next week i want to do this and have it be this way right so that's why i'm like you know when i say on my own terms it's like on my own timeline um capture it when it feels right um chase it down when you're feeling like this is right because yet then the personality connects to that and i think yeah. the personality makes that pop and that's something that i've really noticed with um strangers angels man is we have connected with people on a level that I never thought we would be able to. And it'll be interesting to see if that grows, you know, I mean, because, you know, we have, I feel we have a very solid fan base right now that I'm incredibly thankful for. And it's in all these different pockets and it'll be really interesting to see if they all latch on because of the curse and the exposure that it's now going to have that you're like, what, what could this possibly turn into? You know what I mean? It's right. like wrestling again, right? We got, we got all the territories. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's like we, we got to get it over right um so it's interesting man so speaking of territories like just yesterday um i did an interview yesterday morning for a podcast in australia 
Nice. And for me, that was the first time I did one for, you know, uh, another country. And, you know, when, when the guy reached out to me last week, I was like, oh, crap. Like, who the hell cares about me, in, let alone in the United States, but Australia? Um, so when, when, you, when that happens to you, you do. <laughs> but but when that happens to you with, with your music, like when you start getting these notifications from around the world that people are digging what you're doing, how, like, again, how mind blowing is that? Because, you know, it's, it's hard enough it's, when you think you're reaching people in Texas, your home state, but let alone around the world. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very interesting with us because we're getting it from so many different places right now. And you don't always really know where they're coming from. And when, when you think you expect like, okay, like this is going to, you know, this is going to get over here. Right. Using my reference terms, we're going to hot shot this spot. It's going to be great. Right. You're like completely didn't work that way. And it came out from somewhere else and we're getting over somewhere else and had no idea. And so it was really interesting right now, especially with the way, um, you know, the radio's working and the way Sirius XM worked, that was a real eye opener for us to, to realize, you know, just how much of like a rock fan base there is out there mm-hmm. and how, the, you know, they call it Octane Nation. And it really is. Yeah. It's like, if you get in, buddy, you're in, you know? Um, yeah. I appreciate that because I miss that, you know, about, about something, a legion know a legion that follows what you're doing and so to start to see it just kind of like pop up everywhere is crazy um we're getting mad love in the uk right now which is super huge um our spotify stream is very interesting um the second country that we're biggest in is germany which is a super little kick for me because my girlfriend's from germany so (laughs) i I remember sending her a screenshot i was like look it's our number two country but what's weird is like the band's never played there we don't really push out there um, I can't think of any press that we've really had out there. So that's one of those things, you know, that I'm saying you're working one place and you're going, we are going balls out right here, but yet it latches on somewhere else. And you're like, how right. in the world that, you know, and then you just run with it. You're like, okay, well, let's take that and run with it. So it's interesting. You know, that, that's the one thing I noticed about um, Octane, uh, you know, listen to Octane for I don't know, maybe 10 years from now. Um, there and you might be able to to tell me better about this, but they seem to me like they're loyal. You know what I mean? Like they're loyal to the bands that they helped, especially if it's a band they helped, you know, bring to the fans and, and put over the top. You know, they have their rotation, yes, of, of new music, but they're still loyal to those songs and those bands that they've been playing for ten years, and you'll still hear them in the mix consistently. They don't like push them to the side like after a rotation of six months, you know, three months, six months, and then you never hear from them again. Three years, six years, ten years later, you're still going to hear somehow, some way, those songs that they helped, you know, put over. You know, you're still going to hear them being pumped down on Octane. Yeah, totally, man. That's that's why I say for us, that's like that's a mother load right there, man. Because if you can live in that world and you can do well at it it's going to serve you well. There's a lot of my friends' bands, you know, Saul, Any Given Sin, that, I mean, they're just, you know, bringing the horizon. It's like, you're not going to get those bands yanked off. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, exactly. Octane anytime soon. Uh, um, and that's a beautiful thing because they will also, you know, um, take chances on bands that wouldn't normally have a chance. You know, they see yeah. something special in them and they help propel that. And then in the back end, then you're like, okay, now, you know, we, they got satellite first and you're like, okay, well now we'll go and get radio. So it's, I mean, Octane is just so extremely awesome, huge, influential. And I'm not just saying that because they've been like great to us. I mean, I've seen it happen for other bands, you know, now yeah. to see it happen for us is super cool too, you know? Um, but it definitely is. If they, if they're, if they've broken you, they're going to have your back like until yeah. the end. And that's something I think that we all kind of chase, you know, we want to be, I know I do. I want to be one of those bands that Octane breaks and Octane lays claim to us. <laughs> we broke as strange as angels, right? Like you heard them nice. in heavy rotation here first. I'm like, Jose, I will get your back to the end of time, right? Like it's a beautiful thing. I'll tell you what, uh, I, Jose is 
the dude. I love that dude to death. I, I've had the opportunity to interview him. Um, have emailed with him quite a lot and talked to him. And he, he is a genuine dude like yourself, man. I, I love that. Thank you, man. And he loves he loves metal, man. Yeah. He, he loves yeah. metal. He's Mexican like me. And we both love Selena. So I'm like, bro, <laughs> connect all the facts, <laughs> man. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, now we're in 2021 now, which I, I don't know how it happened, but we're here. Um, and 2020 was basically a wash. Well, it was pretty much a, a wash for live shows. Um, 2021, do you think we're going to see live shows? Do you think we're going to see a Strangers Angels doing live shows? What do you think is going to happen? I mean, I hope so. You know, it's um, it's still real, like, scary you know i'm still sitting i think the same way right because there's a part of me that's like you know at some point you want to get to living again and you yeah. want to feel like a sheep right and then there's another side though too that i'm like you see bad things happen and you're like man call me a sheep i'm gonna stay home and just block out the world right so i'm still on that side where you're like what is the right way to go with any of this and i guess the bigger question is will there ever really be like is this like forever changing the way we're gonna do all this you know what i mean um because it'll always kind of be like in the back of your head i don't necessarily want to throw caution to the wind um i don't necessarily want to be like um over the top so it's it's a very it's just a hard place to be right i mean i'd love to play um, I'd love to get back out there, especially with all these tunes that we've got now too, you know, and sure. the catalog. I mean, we've built over 2 million streams, like our fan base is growing. You would love to actually go out there and experience all the work we've been doing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, we've been getting, it's, it's interesting. We've actually been getting show offers and festival stuff already. Um, and then they keep getting like pushed back. And we, you know, we've got you guys on this, you know what I mean? We got a really cool offer to do a show with Alter Bridge, who I love. Um, nice. A festival with them, and then you're like, okay, well, we might have to change the date. You know, we might have to move this around. So I think I'm of the place of, like, let's just see what happens. Yeah, and I think for, for us, you know, I know for me, um, it'll feel right in my gut, and I'll just follow that. Nice. But, but probably yeah, won't shut out the gate too prematurely. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, like, I think you, you said it right. Like, you, you just don't know. I don't think anybody truly knows. I think it's going to be uh, a while till we see, you know, definite live shows again. And, like, I'm trying to figure out how, like, and I don't think it's going to happen. Like, you know, the thing that most people were waiting for last summer, the whole big Molly Crew Death Leopard Stadium mm -hmm. tour, like, I, I'm thinking to myself, like, you're not seeing um, in, in sports arenas. They're not letting fans really in. Probably at all. You know, they're going to let a quarter of the fans in at the Super Bowl. How are they going to let people in at a stadium concert? I don't, I don't understand how. Yeah, it, and there and there's so much I think that people that aren't in the business don't know. You know, especially with the bigger bands too, is like there's so much liability. With that. Yeah, you're, you're you're traveling with people. You're traveling with the crew. Like it's right. not just like a local band rolling up and we're all going to kind of roll the dice, right? You know, so there's a lot of stuff that you have to think about in the variables and i'm like you're within one city and another within 24 hours like so you got to think about how like what you're picking up and dropping off along the way too you know there's a oh, lot of right. stuff that i don't think anyone thinks about that you know like for michelle and i you're like okay you know what for us we could do a few fly dates or something or get in and out somewhere really quick and like you kind of have control of the situation and we could you know get to our show play the show still kind of keep it a distance, jump back up, get out, right? But in those instances, I'm like, in a tour bus, you're in the closest quarters ever. Private plane, yeah. you're in the close quarters, and it costs a lot. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, and how many are you going to get if you've got, you know, a stadium to a crew, right? Like, I mean, a big, right. just, a, a, a big, just high-level touring band has, you know, what, 20 people at least, I would think, mm -hmm. right? You know what sure. I mean? Because we're, we're little, and we each got one each person, right? So you're like, yeah. there's already, you know, a good five, ten people on there. Think about those big shows, you know, um, and those stadium ones are massive that it's just like, um, there's so much more that goes into it, you know. And I think um, something you might see happening is maybe the the uh, the blue collar bands, let's say, right? Like the, um, 
the the we're not super big or we're not little yet start to like break through because yeah. like you know i would say like that's you know like as strange as angels right we are able to we're bigger than some but we're not close <laughs> enough to the big dogs but we can also travel cost effectively <laughs> yeah. and also do yeah. a handful of shows um that we can manage well you know so i think it's time for like when it used to be i feel like you know rewind a year and a half you know there was little bands and then there was the massive ones it's kind of like whoa that gap might right. be able to like there's that little space where you're like yo man those bands that want to get out and do it can really like again like we talked about earlier jump through those holes those hoops yeah you know what i mean yeah and maybe kind of stand up and, and fly the flag for the shows and keep it alive um and do it in small doses so it'll be interesting man for sure so uh another thing i noticed too uh on your facebook page you guys are actually doing a contest for the fans for the cars yeah you know what um the dude joel alfano that runs it who also runs the serious xm fan page which is super cool joe mad love to you bro um he took us on which was a, another huge thing for us to be able to start building the band and building the fan base um it put together this really cool idea of like doing a raffle so that we would give away these private you know zoom acoustic performances um handwritten lyrics um all kinds of different stuff some merchandise that we have the first run of the cursed tees um limited edition runs of other stuff like limited edition cds just a bunch of different things like happening um to kind of engage everybody and get back and find a way to still to work it right to 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 get in with people you're like hey we can't play a live show but we can connect on this raffle thing um you can't go to a show and get me to you know, write some handwritten lyrics or for you or get an, an exclusive shirt that we only have on tour. You know what? Let's bridge that gap. So it's really a way to bridge that gap, to engage people, to connect with people and to just do something super fun and exclusive only to anyone that's like in our As Strange as Angels Guardians Facebook group that Michelle was talking about. So it's a lot like the Sirius XM Octane group where you're getting exclusive content, um, you know, live shows, live streams, getting on and just talking um that's exactly what we're doing with this man so it's super fun so if anyone's interested go check it out we're doing it till like february 1st that's awesome which the next time we do this you better be like uh you, you gotta do an acoustic version of a song for me done if i didn't have a if i had a guitar next to me i'd be for you right now <laughs> that would be awesome that would be freaking amazing i love that man Anytime, yeah, brother. Absolutely. Anything for you, bro. As long as you break the guitar over my head and put me through a table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, all right. So, where uh, where's the best place everybody should go to, to hear the, the curse, to watch the curse? Man, it is, you know, it, it's these days, it's just the best way is everywhere, right? Because it literally is like everywhere. There's streaming services. I don't even know of what they are, right? I stick to like the main ones. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's out all you know spotify apple music all major streaming um outlets um check it out on youtube on our youtube page as strange as angels you can check out the first we've also um we're on a thing called the music network tv on roku and apple tv check it out okay um yeah it's super cool they've been playing a lot of bands that are coming up it's it's a super cool station music network yo yo and uh i may be even hosting a new music show once in a while for them too so Sweet. excited about that yeah man because i love to be able to talk about new music and get in there and do my thing and you know us man we'll talk forever and um <laughs> the socials grab us at as strange as angels everywhere other than twitter it's at angels underscore strange you know that one has been driving me crazy and i still have not been able to get someone to get that dude to let go of his twitter account so we can have it <laughs> wow. So it's super funny, man. Like you're pushing it and you're like, everything is at as strange as angels except for Twitter. And how about Sound Foundation? How's things going over there with, you know, pandemic? I mean, everything, again, like when we talked last time, everything was virtual at that point. Has it gone back to more back in person yet? Or You know, I mean, all I'm working with down at the Sound Foundation is songwriting and recording you know, and then any bands that are coming in to rehearse. So we've had to like change it up quite a bit. You know, our instructors do everything virtual. Um, you know, I'll do what I need to do if I've got to come in and track somebody's drums, somebody's vocals, we'll do that. Um, we are doing a lot of stuff still virtually and over Zoom, which has been cool because I've been able to work with artists from all over now. 
which is super, super cool, you know, especially with the, the buzz we've been getting in the UK. I've been getting to work with some sure. UK artists. So it's handy because I get up early with Dexter anyways for school. So their eight o'clock or my eight o'clock is like their two o'clock in the afternoon. So that works out kind of handy. Um, nice. So it's created a, a different kind of thing going on with clients and artists I've been able to work with. So, you know, again, making the best of a rough situation, you know, and just trying to get through it, um, but still very much alive, so very much strong. Just the model has changed quite a bit to really pushing um, the studio work and the mixes probably more than anything. I have been mixing like crazy and I love it. That's awesome. Dude, I am, uh, again, I'm very happy that you got to be number one here for me on the show. Dude, I'm honored, dude. We put the show through the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I, I'm so stoked for you with the, the new single and everything you got going and I, I wish the world would open up so you can really bring it to the masses even more I would love to man. it would be it would be interesting I think the one you know cool thing about it as far as having to pause for a moment is that it's really given Michelle and I a chance to to build that live show up you know, which has been super exciting and to get creative, you know, like I said, I embraced the, the, the technology side of it. So I've been working on crazy things like timing the light shows, doing all this stuff that when we were first taking off, uh, may not have had that opportunity, you know, right. just because it was like, go, 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 go. So now we've had a chance to kind of like, okay, well, let's set into what we're doing, figure out what we're doing and uh, really run course on that. So it's been cool. So hopefully when we finally can play, it'll be off the hook. Nice. And thank you, brother, for having me. I appreciate it. And I always dude, love talking to you, bro. Absolutely, dude. Now you got to uh, get the new single out there so we can talk again very, very soon. Absolutely. You got it, my man. Be good, dude. <laughs> you too, man. Take care. And hey, congrats on the relationship, too. I got to say, I love seeing it. Yeah. Yeah, right. It's, diff it's, it's different, man. Yeah, the, the, the personal part of the show. Um, there you go. Um, it was a rough divorce that I went through, as you know, um, and, and more so because it's what six years old now, um, mm -hmm. almost as old as Dexter is. Geez, um, and that was the real hard part. Is you know, Dexter's my little boy is the most important thing in the world to me, as you sure. know, we've talked about all the time. And so when you have that vulnerability, it can make anything just just really scary and maybe scarier than it needs to be you know um but when you've never dealt with it before you don't know how to deal with it and you don't know what's coming at you um so it took a long time for me man i didn't get you know into anything i definitely shied away from any relationship possible because it was like just just scary um sure. really scary um even would feel like guilty sometimes you're like oh my god i wouldn't ever want to like Dexter to think that some someone or something was more important than him, right? And it yeah. just takes a while to like, it was kind of like with the band, the way that I had to evolve and like reinvent myself. It was the same way for me as a person. Like I just had to like get my bearings underneath me, right? Not be a little scared and the right one would come around. It would kind of remove that fear, you know? And uh, that's how it is with my girl. It's crazy to be able to awesome. feel like not scared you know what I mean? And we, and we had talked about yeah. stuff like this before, right? Sure. And she's the first one to make me feel like, you know, not scared. And, that, you know, you can just take that leap of faith, I guess. And so it's been really, really fun. And it's something I've never felt before. So awesome. all kinds of crazy music is coming out of it already because you get that spark. And I know you know that yeah. feeling, man, where you like, you, you make that connection and you're like, everything just feels awesome again, right? about life i'm living you know it I mean? man i'm living it I'm yeah totally so, so you get it, it yeah. right and, it, and yeah. it's, it's fun that i feel like i just let things go at the pace that they needed to and i was like if there's something there for me and it's in my path that's the way it'll be and i felt that way with the music and i felt the way with the relationships and they all just connected beautifully um and i just maintained my focus on dexter all the time so hey thanks for noticing man because she, she's pretty cute absolutely dude. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I do. I see the smile on your face in the pictures, and I'm um, super stoked for you, man. I, I awesome, really am man. Really happy for both. Thank of you, these. brother. I appreciate it, man, very much, dude. Well, hopefully, we can talk again soon, man. Absolutely, man. Good luck with everything. When, you know, hey, thank you, know you brother. We'll find you, and let's uh, keep in touch. That's right. And request it on Octane. <laughs> there you Everybody. go. And the curse. Call up Jose. Yeah. Jose, no. Tweet him. There you go. <laughs> awesome, brother. Have a good night, man. Appreciate it. You too, bro. Take care. All right. Much love, brother. Bye-bye.